What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix and welcome to my complete level 1 to 99 fletching guide. My guide from almost two years ago is very outdated and doesn't reflect the quality that I want on my channel. So this video goes into every piece of detail when it comes to training the skill. So what is fletching? Fletching involves the creation of ranged ammunition and weapons. More recently, you can create ranged shields and blowpipes through fletching, as well as battle staffs with Celestris Bark. There's over 10 different categories when it comes to gaining fletching XP, from cutting logs into bows with a knife, creating a crossbow or a ballista, to creating arrows, bolts, javelins, or darts. Fletching is a very versatile skill. There's a lot of different ways to get to level 99, and this guide covers every method that you might consider doing. Fletching is the fastest skill to level 99, provided you have the money. We've seen multiple records set by players in the community, with Michael RS getting 99 in 4 hours off Tutorial Island, and Ebscape beating that, doing it in 3 hours. This extremely fast pathway though costs over 150 mil. In this video, I want to show you guys some other very fast methods that will cost a lot less or even profit. As a regular account, all of your fletching supplies can be bought off the Grand Exchange, and as an Iron Man will of course need to gather the resources yourself, which I'll talk a lot about towards the end of the guide. When you're training fletching, it's incredibly important to understand GP per XP. The GP per XP is a measure of how expensive or profitable a method will be on the way to 99. It's calculated like this. Let's say you're making adamant darts. You need addy dart tips and feathers to make them. And for each dart, you get 15 fletching XP. So the calculation becomes the final product minus the ingredients which is the cost or profit of making that final product, and then that divided by the XP you get. So in this case, it would be 74 minus 193 minus 3, which is negative 122, divided by 15, and you get negative 8.13 GP per XP. So this means for every experience point that you get in fletching, you'll be losing 8.13 GP. So for every million experience, that's an 8 mil loss, which is a lot. It would take a huge chunk of time for you to work out the GP per XP, and that's where online calculators come in handy. Over the last couple of weeks, I've put together a fully functional calculator for this guide, which includes every method in the game. It grabs the 10 most recent trades done on the Grand Exchange using the OS Buddy API, then it does a weighted average using the amount of volume traded. So to break that down a bit further, if someone sells one adamant dart tip for 50 coins somehow, it won't affect the calculator's price since there's hundreds of thousands traded at the actual market price. This is by far the most accurate way to get the current traded price and the calculator's prices update every five minutes. Also on the page is the average XP per hour of every method, which gives you a great idea of how fast a method is. There's also the GP per hour, Items with very, very little trade volume will display a low volume indicator. So for those items, be very careful trading them because you'll have trouble buying or selling the supplies for those methods. The GP per XP of every method changes really commonly, pretty much every day, but some will change more than others. In this next part of the guide, I'm going to take you through from level 1 to 99 with reliable methods that won't fluctuate in price. You of course can always refer back to that fletching calculator to check the current GP per XP. Alright, so getting into the training part of the guide, I have two very important fletching tricks that you need to know before you start. Dragon fruit pies now exist in old school RuneScape, and they can be bought off the Grand Exchange for a pretty low price. Taking a bite of dragon fruit pie temporarily boosts your fletching by four levels, which means you can essentially start on a method four levels early. Like if you're level 81 and you need 85 to string a magic longbow, you can eat a dragon fruit pie and you can make it. My second tip is that fletching can and should be trained while you're doing other skills unless you're making bows. Methods with stackable items, which is a lot of methods like arrows, darts, bolts or javelins, they can be kept in your inventory and used while you train another skill. For example, when you're training agility, between obstacles you can get a hefty amount of XP. So, moving into the pathways, this is the order I'll be talking about each method, starting out with bows, which is the traditional way to 99, but since the introduction of the Grand Exchange and a higher supply of other items, there's a lot of other methods, like darts, bolts, and arrows, which I'll talk a lot about soon. 
This is the long established pathway to 99, starting with arrow shafts and regular logs and working your way up doing the best short bow or long bow you can. The process of making a bow involves using a knife and logs, cutting it into an unstrung bow, and then bowstring is used on the bow to string it into a complete one. The process of cutting a bow takes three game ticks, so 1.8 seconds, but stringing a bow takes only two game ticks, so 1.2. Both of these actions give the same amount of X XP, so that means that stringing is faster XP per hour. It is, however, a lot more expensive to string bows at lower levels, so it's recommended to cut bows until you can string willow long bows. Then you can string your bows up to you long bows, skipping magic short bows, and then finishing with magic long bows is the fastest traditional method. If you follow this from level 1 to 99, you'll profit 21 mil at this point in time after you sell back the bows. The XP rates during the lower levels are a lot slower than other training methods. Methods. However, the XP rates of stringing you and magic longbows are an excellent choice from level 70. So with that, I recommend doing something like steel arrows or something faster, which will cost you some money up until level 70, where you can string magic and you longbows for a 20 mil profit. I'll be showing a lot more methods like steel arrows later on in the video. Using the XP rates shown at each tier on the screen, it will take approximately 60 hours to get to level 99. Next up is the fastest way to level 99, and that is through making darts. You can make darts by using dart tips on feathers, and the faster you click or tap on each one, the more XP you'll get. Darts are best made on OSRS mobile or with a touchscreen PC, so you don't have to move your mouse. Unlike with smithing dart tips, you don't need to complete the tourist trap quest to fletch darts. The quest only unlocks the ability to smith. Bronze darts are unlocked at 10 fletching, so the fastest way to level 10 or level 6 if you use a dragon fruit pie is by making headless arrows or bronze arrows, which I'll talk more about shortly. Making each dart as you unlock it will cost you a massive 160 mil, but with those dragon darts, you can get up to 5 million XP per hour, which is extremely fast. Instead to save money, you can do the best darts up until Mithril, which have a GP per XP of around 6. That makes them a good middle ground costing around 80 mil from 1 to 99. The next methods of this video fall under the cheaper fast methods, and I'll compare them to bows and darts so you can judge which one you want to do. Firstly, bolts, and they're a fantastic option. Bolts are made by using feathers on unfinished metal bolts. Creating them is similar to making darts, where you have to click on each one, but you'll be getting a lower XP rate because the XP per action is a decent amount lower. Making rune bolts, you can average just under 1 million XP per hour, and with dragon bolts, you can get a little over 1 million. A lot of bolts have low trading volumes, but some have high volumes, like Addy or Rune Bolts. The first bolt you unlock is Bronze at level 9 fletching, and I really don't recommend these because there's a really low supply of unfinished Bronze Bolts. I highly recommend starting at Mithril, Adamant, or Rune Bolts, which all have very high XP rates but have very low GP per XPs. It's important to keep in mind that the prices I'm showing here are likely to change, so refer back to the fletching calculator down in the description and filter to buy bolts. When you're buying bolts, don't put offers in the grand exchange too far over the price. Allow time for them to buy to avoid overspending. The second cheaper category is arrows, and arrows can be made by using headless arrows on metal arrow tips, all buyable on the Grand Exchange. Every type of arrow apart from rune arrows is a great middle ground for XP and cost. At level 1, you can get over 40k XP per hour with headless arrows, while they give you 200k in profit. Those are made using arrow shafts on feathers. You can also make bronze arrows at level 1 until 10, which is the fastest way to level 10, costing only 7k. At level 30, steel arrows are the best middle ground. They give over 200k XP per hour, similar to that of stringing magic longbows, and only a 1 to 2 GP per XP loss, which is very low. Dragon arrows are an AFK alternative to using darts at level 90, and they give 600k per hour, with an AFK interval of around 15 seconds. Broad bolts. You need to unlock the broader fletching slayer reward at a slayer master, and then you can make them using feathers and unfinished broad bolts. Currently, you break even making broad bolts, and you're able to reach XP rates over 300k per hour. The main barrier for this method is the 300 slayer points, but after that, broads are a great way to train from 55. 
Dragon Javelins are another fast method unlocked at 92 fletching, and standardly making them gives an XP rate of around 400k XP an hour. But you can also one tick them, which can be done by holding down the space bar and using the Dragon Javelin heads on a javelin shaft every game tick. That lets you get over 1 million XP per hour, although the cost is very close to Mithril Darts. So realistically, Dragon Javelins are better if you want some AFK training, since you can wait around 20 seconds between each click. So now that I've gone through bows, darts, and some cheaper alternatives, I'd like to show some recommended pathways to 99. As I mentioned, at level 70, you unlock U longbows and then magic longbows at 85, which are both fantastic money. And through to 99, you'll make 20 mil. In my opinion, it's worth spending some money until you get to that level 70 mark, because otherwise you'll be training very slowly and it's not worth your time. I'm gonna suggest two example pathways, which should hopefully spur your imagination to put together a path Pathway. Firstly, if you trained from bronze arrows through to mithril darts all the way through until level 70 and then did long bows, it would take around 35 hours but you'd profit 11 mil at the end of it. Initially though, there's a 9 mil cost of getting from 1 to 70. A fast cheaper alternative is making headless arrows from level 1 to 30 which gives a 200k profit, then from 30 to 70 make steel arrows which give 200k XP per hour and then you get the 20 mil profit leaving you at 17 mil profit. This does take about 10 hours more than doing the dart method, but still faster than cutting logs. So the next section of this guide is the profitable training methods. I mentioned earlier from level 1, you can make headless arrows for around 200k coins per hour, but only 40k fletching XP an hour. Gem tip bolts are the biggest category of money makers when it comes to fletching. The best ones to make are high volume bolts, like adamant ruby or adamant diamond bolts. Currently with ruby bolts, you get around 100k XP an hour while profiting almost 200k coins per hour. Onyx bolts are very profitable at this point in time, but I'm not sure that that will last, but you can see that there's a lot of different money making options out there. At 76 fletching, you can make amethyst broad bolts, and to make those, you need broader fletching from a slayer master. You make these with finished broad bolts and amethyst bolt tips. After selling them back, you profit around 2 GP per XP. At level 84, you can then make all types of dragon gem tipped bolts. They give the same amount of XP as their non-dragon variant, depending on the gem that's applied, but the GP per XP is completely different. Dragon Dragonstone Bolts or Dragon Ruby Bolts are both very profitable and in high demand. From level 84 to 99, at this point in time, you'd make around 19 mil making either of those. Another currently profitable method is cutting Celestris Bark into Battle Staves. This requires 40 fletching and there's around a 200 coin gap between the price of the Bark and the price of a Battle Staff. I'm guessing this is because people that harvest Celestris Bark from farming aren't going to spend the time fletching it into a battle staff since they can't note a battle staff at the leprechaun. So with Celestris, you can expect around 200k coins per hour and almost 100k fletching XP per hour. Really good for level 40, but I'm not sure how long that GP per hour will last. At level 53 fletching, you can make toxic blowpipes by using a chisel on a tanzanite fang. The XP per hour is pretty irrelevant since you'll need so much money if you wanted to do it for a whole hour, but you can profit quite a lot per hour as long as you you leave cheap buy orders in for fangs. It's slightly riskier compared to other methods and needs a lot more starting money, but since not many people do it, there's a little gap in the market to make some profit. You can also make ballistas or ballistae, and you don't actually need Monkey Madness 2 to make them. You can make a ballista by using a frame on ballista limbs, then add a ballista spring and then a monkey tail to make a full ballista. The components required all have fairly low trade volumes, particularly the monkey tails. So if you want to profit off making these, you'll need patience when you're waiting for the items to buy, or you will lose money. The next segment of this guide is for Iron Men, getting from 1 to 99. I'm breaking this down into five categories, low level, buying arrow tips, broad fletching, smithing, and miscellanea. As a low level Iron Man, a quick way to level up is by picking up the logs that spawn at the top of Lumbridge Castle, then cut them into arrow shafts and hop world. After you have a few hundred arrow shafts, you can make your way to Port Sarum and go to the fishing shop to buy feather packs. You can then make headless arrows. As a low level and also at a high level, cutting logs and fletching them isn't a bad AFK-ish option, but by no means is it the fastest or what I really recommend doing. You're much better off getting 99 wood cutting at Sullaset Mushrooms or at Teaks and then doing one of these other methods. 
From various range shops like the one in Catherby or the Ranged Guild, you can buy arrow tips at a fairly low price and you can also buy arrow shafts to make headless arrows. On the screen, I've put the approximate GP per XP if you buy 10% of the stock on every world and sell your arrows back to the archery shops. Steel and mithril arrows are very cheap, but there'll be a lot of world hopping involved to get the best price for buying and selling, which will overall affect your XP rate. A method that I used on my Ultimate Iron Man and really recommend for all Iron Men is Broad Fletching, again with that 300 point Slayer reward. From any Slayer Master, you can buy unfinished Broad Bolt Packs or Broad Arrowhead Packs. You can't sell back Broad Arrows, but you can sell Broad Bolts to a general store for around 15 coins each. Making Broad Arrows gives a fair bit more Fletching XP per hour and it's a lot cheaper, but Broad Bolts with a Rune Crossbow give much higher damage per second than a Magic Short bow with broad arrows, so many ironmen will choose to make broad bolts regardless of the price simply for the range power. The next category is smithing, and on your way to level 99 smithing as an ironman, a fair chunk of your experience is hammering bars that you obtain from slayer or mining. Higher level ironmen will want to make a lot of darts to use in the toxic blowpipe as well. Smithing is very important for making adamant bolts, which are vital to make diamond and ruby bolts for bossing. The process of making those will also give a big chunk of fletching XP. The most fletching XP per bar comes from arrow tips, since you get 15 arrow tips per bar and the XP per arrow is more than darts or bolts. Realistically, if you're using bars above mithril, it's best to make darts, which requires the tourist trap quest to smith dart tips. The last category for Iron Men is miscellanea, which provides thousands and thousands of maple logs, and those can be cut into longbows and then strung with bowstring and out for a profit. Managing miscellanea requires the throw of miscellanea quest and the royal trouble quest really helps. This method doesn't work on ultimate ironmen because they can't use miscellanea, but as a regular ironman, it's probably the easiest way to get a lot of logs. So that's my level 1 to 99 fletching guide, a reminder to check out the calculator linked down below to see the current prices for every method in the game. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more old school runescape content. Leave a like if you learnt something today, thanks for watching and see you next time.